here some encrypted data and I can see my <laughs> email <laughs> Hi, this is Anna, and there's something I wanted to show you. Check out Patrick's YouTube page and look at this video called Windows is Spying on You, and I can prove it. Hey, I felt a little bit naked here because unlike Patrick, who uses Mac, I'm actually a Windows user. So I wanted to try and replicate what Patrick showed in his VM environment, but on my actual Windows computer. So hey, if you have a Windows on your own, I'm going to show you some steps you can take to see what your Windows computer is leaking about you. And um, <laughs> by the way, here's the disclosure I'm not cyber tech expert in any way so uh, please <laughs> follow along at your own risk okay so let's start by turning on Kali um, this is my first time using Kali you can download it from Microsoft App Store what we need to do is uh, set up the proxy first you can find it in settings then network internet and what you need to do is to turn on the proxy on and then enter exactly this IP address and the port number so the proxy is just basically a middleman between your computer and the internet. So instead of your computer talking directly to the internet, it's going to send a request to the proxy first and then the proxy forwards the request to the internet and it gets response back and sends it back to your computer through proxy. <laughs> Okay, I guess so when you set the proxy to this number, you're telling Windows to send the traffic back to the same computer in 8080 is just the default port. Um, now we can start meet and proxy and meet them proxy stands for man in the middle proxy and it's a tool that sits between your computer and the internet and it lets uh, you see and inspect and analyze the network traffic so this tool is going to help us see what exactly our our my windows sends um sends out i'm sorry my voice is a little bit off i i've been a little bit sick so we use uh, dash dash listen dash host with the proxy ip address that we just set up um okay and then we do dash dash listen dash port with the port number which is 8080 okay um aha uh -huh. oh i see the issue we just need to delete one space okay now we can hit enter again and start monitoring the flows here's another step that i had to take in order to set up this experiment i went to this website meet mit and i had to install the certificates this one for your windows and you just follow the steps it's pretty self-explanatory I guess um, I also installed the Firefox certificate maybe if you're not using the Firefox you don't have to uh, but this is what I did so let's go into flows and <laughs> uh, pardon my mess I, uh, I just mess even on my desktop you can see already I have a lot of applications running here, right? Look at all this on the bottom open. Let's see if any of them trigger the flows. Oh, look, uh, we have a report from Teams and we get several HTTPS requests. So how about we look at this uh, hypertext and transfer protocol? And if we scroll down, we can see this methods defines and we can look at the get and post methods listed here let's check what they actually mean and we interested in the post because uh, well <laughs> get is pretty self-explanatory i mean post too but post requests are designed to allow a uniform method to cover functions like posting a message to a bulletin board submitting a form or extending a database through an append operation so um, it looks like the post is what we interested in let's look at our first post and it made to microsoft.com from teams which i have running and request section we see a csp report showing the document 
for Microsoft Teams. So CSP stands for Content Security Policy. So this is a good thing, right? This is a security feature used by websites like Microsoft Teams to control which external resources a web page is allowed to load that. Um, and it helps prevent different attacks. So you can see the CSP report document URI. <laughs> this is the web page where the violation happened. So then we have the referrer, which is a Microsoft Teams, okay. The violated directive shows that the CSP rule was violated. If we scroll down, we can see all the domains that Teams is allowed to connect to. So CSP blocks anything not on the list. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not sure why Walmart is on this list. <laughs> um, but I don't know why Teams needs to send my information to Walmart. Oh, come on, Chase, come on, Coca-Cola. Uh, why is all these companies on this list? Are they partners with Teams? Uh, okay, so I don't see anything in the response section and it's just some details about the client connection and service certificates, nothing interesting there. Uh, so let's get out of this one and well, look at all the post requests that were made while my apps are just sitting there. I wasn't even clicking anything. Um, um, there is no way of telling which app triggered which post request, but let's look at the post. A request made by Teams again, since at least <laughs> we know which app made this. Uh, let's open the next one. It all looks the same. Let's scroll down to the bottom and you see a blocked URI and some WebSocket information. So this shows a specific WebSocket connection that was blocked. Teams tried to connect to an endpoint, but CSP prevented it. Let's go back and click the next post request. Oh, look, this one is from Teams again. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna see anything new, like... <laughs> okay, you please keep watching, okay? Um, I'll bet we're gonna find some post requests made by something else than Teams. So let's scroll down and look at this request. This looks very different. It shows the user agent that I'm using Windows 10 Safari. Now let's scroll down to the JSON section and this tells Microsoft where the request is coming from. We see a registration ID. So it looks like this report is associated with a previous violation report. So this just seems like it helps Microsoft identify where the request came from. Um, okay, let's scroll to the newest request and try poking around my settings section now and see if that triggers anything. Going to the home section gives us a login live post. Okay, let's look at it. Oh wait, I think I accidentally clicked get. Okay, now my, uh, this is another post made by Teams. <laughs> ah, okay, let's look at it anyway. Scrolling down, we see App Store options here. Hmm. Apparently, Microsoft Teams isn't just a chat and a call app. It, it also has a built-in app store where you can install extra apps. And this JSON snippet just shows how it filters those apps, like include suggested apps, true, and include copilot false. Um, I guess there is no copilot with my Teams. That's why it's set to false. Um, okay. <laughs> How do I set it to true? <laughs> I need me some copilot. It's still Teams. Everything is Teams. Let me click system in my setting. Okay, that didn't trigger any post requests. Bluetooth and devices, still nothing. Accounts, let me click that. Okay, now finally something different. This was sent from <laughs> loginlive.com. Let's look at what this HTML file tells us. I see some authentication info here, some encrypted data, and I can see my <laughs> email. <laughs> Let's look at the response section. I see an action taken and it says issued. 
So issued, I guess it means that the request succeeded and I can log in now. I don't see anything suspicious here, do you? <laughs> hey, uh, please leave me a comment if you do see anything suspicious or um, if I accidentally showed any of my private information and just delete that part, uh, please let me know. Okay, so we're not going to be looking at any more Teams uh, posts, um, but please, any cyber tech experts, um, is this information considered um, spying on me? Um, there, there is only one thing that I was very suspicious about, um, Walmart and Chase being on the list of associated domains for Teams. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but hey, leave a comment. What do you think? And I'm signing off. Bye.